Good evening. Welcome to your City Commission meeting. Please turn off or silence all cell phones during the meeting. The meetings are televised every day on Channel 2 at 7 p.m. and midnight and available for viewing on YouTube and Facebook Live. First item is the call to order and the Pledge of Allegiance, followed by a silent meditation. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Next item on the agenda is a proclamation. Excuse me, for Fire Prevention Week. We have Carrie Birch, Chief Carrie Birch, and Bella Whitlock. Did you want to come up? She can wait until he's finished. Okay. What's the chair? Um, the City of Leavenworth. Whereas the City of Leavenworth is committed to ensuring safety and security of all those living in and visiting our city, and whereas fire is a serious public safety concern both locally and nationally, and homes are the locations where people are at greatest risk from fire, and whereas according to the National Fire Protection Association, in a four-year study between 2014 and 2018, almost three out of five home fire deaths were caused by fires in properties with no smoke alarms or smoke alarms that failed to operate. And whereas the City of Leavenworth Fire Department is dedicated to reducing the occurrence of home fires and home fire deaths and injuries through prevention and proper education, and whereas the City of Leavenworth residents are responsive to public education measures and are able to take personal responsibility to increase their safety from fire, especially in their homes and Whereas the 2021 Fire Prevention Week theme, Learn the Sounds of Fire Safety, puts the focus on educating children and adults about smoke and carbon monoxide alarms, their necessity, and how the sounds they make will save lives. Now, therefore, I, Nancy Bowder, Mayor of the City of Leavenworth, hereby, Leavenworth, Kansas, hereby proclaim October 3 through 9, 2021, as Fire Prevention Week. Thank you. Thank you for that. I, I'd just like to say that uh, uh, home home fires and is still the number one for where people lose their lives. And uh, in the last eight years, we've had four fatalities here in Leavenworth. Since 2009, we've had six. And uh, it's still critical. And one reason that the theme this year was to learn the sounds of fire uh, is <coughs> last year there was a lot of schools that did Zoom for their classes mm -hmm. and stuff. And it was reported a lot by teachers. They could hear chirping and stuff in the background Some of, a lot of, on a lot of that Zoom. So that kind of got back to them. So the NFPA this year tried to wanted to use that as the theme. So a lot of people don't know what that chirping means. They need to change the battery and the different sounds. So that's where that come about. Thank you. Wait till public comment? Okay. okay. You're welcome to speak now if you'd like. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. Old business. Consideration of previous mini meeting minutes. <clears throat> minutes from September 14, 21 regular meeting and September 20 and 21, 2021 special meetings. Any uh, changes or edits to these minutes. If not, I would entertain a motion. Madam Mayor, I move that we accept the minutes from the September 14th, 2021 regular meeting and the September 20 and 21, 2021 special meetings. I second. second. It's been moved and seconded. Please begin voting with Commissioner Wilson. Aye. 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 Five to zero. Thank you very much. Okay, next item on the agenda, second consideration ordinances. Uh, number three, second consideration, Ordinance 8175. 
Madam Mayor, this item is before you for second consideration. There's been no changes since the first item. If you have any questions, uh, Police Chief is here to answer those. Okay. Um, this item is adopt 37th edition Uniform Public Offense Code. And, um, Chief, do you have any comments on this? No, ma'am. There's no changes. It's ready. Uh, okay. My recommendation be ready. Any questions? No. Okay. This calls for a roll call vote. Be begin with Commissioner Pricinger. Aye. 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 Five to zero roll call. Um, next item, second consideration, Ordinance 8176. That's adopt 48th edition standard traffic ordinances. Yes, ma'am. There are no uh, changes from the pre first reading. Uh, my recommendation is it's ready to move forward. Thank you, Chief. Um, any other questions or comments on this? If not, this is a roll call vote. Commissioner Wilson? Uh, aye. 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 Five zero on the roll call. Next item, second consideration, Ordinance 8177, adopt the 2021 Intersection Traffic Control Device Master List. Yes, ma'am. Uh, no changes from the first reading. It's uh, ready to move forward. Okay. Any questions or comments on this? Okay. This also is a roll call vote. Commissioner Pricinger. Aye. 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 Five, to, five to, to zero on the roll call. Thank you very much. Yes, ma'am. Okay. New business, public comment. Um, anyone here care to speak? Please state your name, address, and let us know what you want to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm Bella Whitlock, Miss Leavenworth Teen Volunteer. Um, I'm a junior here at Lansing High School. Um, I do live in the city of Leavenworth. I'm here to thank the city of Leavenworth for their fire safety proclamation. My platform for Miss Leavenworth Teen Volunteer is fire safety and prevention. This summer, I was badly burned in a gasoline bonfire accident, giving myself second and third degree burns on my legs. I ended up in KU Med for several days and was unable to walk as a result. So I just want to thank you guys so much. Um, I want to thank the mayor. Thank you so much. <laughs> have a good day. Thank you. We'll stay, stay a second in case they have questions. Yes. Any questions of Bella? <laughs> Ms. Whitlock. Ms. Leavenworth. Volunteer. <laughs> <laughs> what? What? I have a question. Yes. What What do your duties entail, and how long are, will you be in this position? Um, as of right now, my duties are to spread awareness and to spread the prevention of fire mm -hmm. and house fires, electrical fires, right. all sort. Um, as Ms. Leavenworth Teen Volunteer, I am here to um, compete on October 9th mm -hmm. and hopefully win the state title and compete at nationals under Ms. America Volunteer. All right. Very, very are you good. fully recovered? Yes, I am. I still do have a little bit of pain in the sun. I keep my legs out of the sun, and I wear compression at night. But other than that, I'm fully recovered. Well, good. Good to hear. How about, yeah, I know there's some other kids that were uh, injured, too. Are they all doing okay? Yes. Um, they are playing back to their sports. They are wonderful. Good. Good. Good to hear. Great. Chief, did you have something? Yeah, I'd just like to say that uh, Bill and her mom came to the uh, fire station one a few weeks ago, and we gave them a tour, and talked to him, went over some things, and she told us, you know, what, what she wanted to make as her platform and her, her role now. And they, they, they'd just like to commend them and commend her. She, they've been knocking on doors, and today we got a delivery of, like, uh, donated uh, smoke detectors, several big boxes. Oh, so great. Nice. That's good. Nice. Um, nice Spectrum was the one that donated them well, on behalf. Yes, yes great. Yeah. That's great. That's fantastic. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you, Chief. Thank you, Ms. Whitlock. Thank you. Okay. Good, yes, luck. Thank you. Yeah. Good luck. Good luck to you on the night. Yeah. Good, yes. <laughs> Good luck That's on the a night. lot. <clears throat> okay, anyone else care to speak? Yes, sir. Yes. Um, unfortunately, I was unable to attend on the 14th uh, regarding one of the properties that was. Uh, Yes. It was the only one that wasn't given given a uh, extension. We, I, I'm Tom Gould. I live at 208 Miami, um, but I'm calling about, or I'm sorry, I'm, I'm here about 1050 10th Avenue. Mm -hmm. um, we have made some progress on that. There was a little bit of progress that was made before the last meeting, but it wasn't very visible. Um, and, and that's one of the things that, that, unfortunately, nobody in my family was able to be here. Um, over the last weekend and, and since then, we, we have repaired an enormous amount of the siding. Um, it looks an enormous amount better if you drive by it. I had a hard time getting a roofing contractor in line that, that was registered with the state of Kansas. Um, 
eventually, uh, I, I did get a call back and paperwork from American. They were delivering shingles today. Good. Um, so progress has been going on since. Um, I, I don't know that I necessarily need an extension. Um, I don't know that I was on the agenda today on that property, or, or my dad was. Um, progress is happening. Um, I, I don't know if you've had a chance to drive by and look since the last meeting or anything. I apologize for not being here. Um, just family stuff happens. I'll, I'll go by there. But you have, um, Julie is not here, right? right. So we, we can't really answer it. No, we wouldn't want to answer any questions now. Any I don't questions know if, now if anyway. Um, I, I suggest if you haven't, you contact code enforcement, uh, yes. planning and code development to sign the remediation agreement would be your next step. Yes. My, my father has. Okay. Um, he's, he's only in town every once in a while. Um, we did get a, uh, an, an emailed copy of the remediation agreement back to the officer. Um, it was after the meeting, um, okay. so it's dated wrong, but okay. it's, it's in. Okay. Um, and I have talked to the, the officer for that property. They have approved two different permits, one the roofing and one the, uh, the, the deck and siding repair. So that, that, that has been ongoing. Um, like I said, I, I don't know that I necessarily need to ask for an extension. Um, I, I just, unfortunately, was unable to make it. So. Okay. Okay, well, if you would call in and, and talk to, to uh, code enforcement, that would be great. I, I've been in email contact, um, okay. and, and she responds okay. relatively quickly. Um, I, I know they're, they're looking at so many different properties. It's <laughs> Well, thank you for bringing this to our attention. Yeah, no, thank yeah. you. No problem. I, I'm, again, I'm sorry that I wasn't able to make it two weeks ago. Um, that's, okay. that's just, like I said, family stuff happens. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank, thank you for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Ms. Cause, would you like to speak, Commissioner? My name is Vicki Cause. I live at 3660 Tonganoxie Road, and what I'm here for tonight is to thank the City Commission and the staff for the outstanding uh, event of the Camp Leavenworth that was held over the weekend. I was a volunteer for the event on both uh, Friday and Saturday, and I just wanted to let you know because a lot of times you didn't have the opportunity, the staff didn't have an opportunity to really see the people as they came and left the event. And I was able to be there to see both. And I was there to see the end of the people as they left and the people as they were coming in and the excitement and the positive reception that, that was for the people as they were there. They had a wonderful time. The people of the community were so thankful to have had an opportunity to have something. And, and the level of excitement that people had when they figured out that they were able to come to this concert and it was free. And so I want, I mean, it was just amazing. And it was amazing to see the positive response and the amount of thank yous. And it was kind of funny. It was like, I kept getting thank yous. It's like, oh, you're welcome. I mean, even though I... <laughs> That's right. problem, but it was, no, it was great. I mean, and so I just want to thank you on behalf of me as a taxpayer to tell you how much I appreciated that the city commissioners made the decision to set aside the, the, the funds that were through the, um, uh, what is it, the Trans hotel? Trans transient tax. The transient tax. That that was something that you yep. decided that, that was worthwhile to give to the residents of the city of Leavenworth and to give them an opportunity to have that weekend, especially given what our community has been through over the past mm -hmm. year and a half. It was well worth it, and thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. And thank you for volunteering. Very much. Yeah, thank you for volunteering too. Um, next item, any oh anyone else like to speak? Hearing hearing none, we'll move on. Uh, the next item is a public hearing. We uh, public hearing waiver of temporary liquor license for St. Joseph Church on 306 North Broadway. We need to open the public hearing. So moved. I second. It's been moved and seconded. Please begin voting with Commissioner Wilson. Uh, aye. 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 The hearing is open. Um, review of properties by staff. Okay, go ahead. I'll turn this item over to our city clerk, <coughs> uh, Carla Williamson. Okay. Commissioners, this issue before the city commission is to consider a waiver. Um, the code of ordinances requires um, that there uh, could be a, a waiver could be considered um, when somebody wants to hold or have liquor um, that is sold or served at a location within 300 feet of a church, school, nursing home, library, or hospital. 
Um, so it does allow that they come and request a, a waiver from the City Commission and that you can grant that waiver. Um, this is an annual event held by St. Joseph Church located at three, six, I'm sorry, 306 North Broadway. Mm -hmm. It's going to be held on Saturday, October 23rd. It's their German Fest dinner and dance. Mm -hmm. And um, we do have a representative from the church here that uh, if you have any questions, you can um, check with him on that and ask any questions of that. We did send letters to all property owners within 300 feet uh, to notify them of the public hearing this evening. We received no response from that, and I don't, there, I don't think there's anybody in the audience um, to speak on that, but we can certainly check. Um, so I will just uh, turn it over if you have any questions for Mr. Fink. Okay, Mr. Fink, would you like to come up? You might as well promote your event here. <laughs> we have to be official, you know. Yes, thank you. Uh, yes, this is uh, our 19th anniversary of doing the German Fest. The St. Joseph Church is the first Catholic German church here in this whole Kansas City area. So it has been around for, you know, 170 years or so. And it is just a good way for us as community. It's not, uh, the, the alcohol really isn't anything but just, uh, there's a few people that like to have a, an adult beverage. But it's, it's just more <laughs> just to make it, uh, you know, aesthetically pleasing. And, hey, what's an Oktoberfest without a little <laughs> beer yeah, or a little wine? Yeah. So, yeah. And uh, <laughs> this is the first time we've actually had it in October. And so we're really going to see if this is, we may start doing it every year at the same time. And we're taking uh, precautions. We have some areas that we're going to set up outside for those people that are concerned about the COVID. But uh, this is the first time we'll really actually do it inside. We've always had a tent outside before and that. So we've really just changed the whole atmosphere of it. And we'll see where it goes. But so, uh, so we did the October, uh, we did the... I'm sorry, St. Patrick's Day was a carry-out dinner, so mm -hmm. we didn't have to beg for a license for that one. Yeah. So, so um, any questions? Give us the date and time, please. Yes, the date and time, it's going to be from five, uh, 4 o'clock, there'll be a mass, a German mass, and then at 5 we'll serve dinner, and that'll go till 8 o'clock. And, uh, you know, come one, come all. I cooked the sauerbraten and the <laughs> German potato salad. and uh, He's a very good time by, too, all. by the way, and yeah. And, stuff, so. and and I'll be singing during the German mass, which there, I hope yeah. they don't make us butcher German again. Mm -hmm. I'll be down cooking, so I won't be able to do it. <laughs> which we generally do. Anything else? Any other questions for this? Mr. Fink, uh, I heard you say sour brat and potato salad and brats. Give me the complete menu. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, a red cabbage uh, yeah, mm. yes. and the whole thing. So it is really a drink. So sour brat and brats. Right. Cabbage. Sour brat and brats. German potato salad and hot, uh, hot. Is pot roast, German pot roast. Or? Yeah, Bert, it's basically German pot roast is okay. what it is. So, it's, so it's, but the uh, potato salad is German, uh, hot potato salad. It is German potato yeah. salad, yeah. yeah, truly with the bacon and yeah, yeah. the whole bit. So. Oh, yeah, I kind of grew up on some of this stuff. And then yeah, it's really and dessert, good, so. too. <laughs> neck bones. The neck bones. Neck bones. <laughs> Get carried away. So you get some pork <laughs> they have some pork shoulders. And they <laughs> Yeah. But, uh -huh. It's really good. And dessert, too. And desserts, right. Yeah. Okay. And there will be water and uh, tea there. No. <laughs> and no one will touch it. <laughs> <laughs> That's not true. Okay, any Thank other you. questions? No. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, now um, I need a motion to close the public hearing. So moved. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Please begin voting. Commissioner Pricinger. Aye. 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 All right. We're closed. All right. The next item is to consider a waiver for a temporary liquor license for St. Joseph Church. Madam Mayor, I move that we uh, approve a waiver for a temporary liquor license for St. Joseph's Church, 306 North Broadway, for their event on 23 October. Am I correct there? 23 October yes, 2021. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Please begin voting, Commissioner Wilson. Aye. 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 Okay, pass. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Don't run out of food. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know, it's not a bad problem to have, but it was a little, yeah. a little tough. Okay. Consider, okay, next item, general items. Consider a cereal malt beverage license for Ava's Island Cafe, 732 Shawnee Street. 
Carla will continue with this item. Madam Mayor and Commissioners, this is uh, to consider a request for a 2021 cereal malt beverage license for Ava's Island Cafe. They're located at 732 Shawnee Street. Um, it is an on-premise uh, consumption license. They do currently have a, a city health permit and the, um, the application has been approved and reviewed by the police department. Um, so that request is before you this evening. Okay. Any questions or comments? Ava's Island Cafe is a very good place to eat, just to FYI. Yeah, it is very good. Um, if there aren't any comments, do I have a motion? I move to approve the issuance of a 2021 on-premise consumption cereal malt beverage license for Ava's Island Cafe at 732 Shawnee Street. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Please begin voting, Commissioner Pricinger. Aye. 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 All right. Thank you. Next item, um, resolutions. Resolution B-2295, 2021 Planners to Capital Fund Program Grant. I'm happy to uh, introduce Andrea Cheatham to, to handle the next two items. Hello, um, Commissioners and Mayor. Um, this is our um, 2021 Capital Fund Program Grant. We receive this grant every year. Um, we have to come before you all to get it approved. Um, we are currently receiving the maximum grant we have for the last several years due to our high occupancy that we do keep 100% rental. Any questions on this? No, this is... This grant comes from Housing and Urban Development, mm -hmm. HUD, Ms. Cheatham? It sure does. It comes every year, and we use it for our capital fund projects, all our capital projects. And is it, is it about that amount, 163000 every year? Well, it's actually been going up a little every year, okay. so I think this is about the highest we've gotten. Okay. Andrea, can you give a couple examples of some of the, especially the big project we just did last year, um, and some of the projects that you have intended for these dollars? Sure. Um, we, um, we use this project, this money for projects like the year, a couple of years down, we replaced the interior doors of all the tenants' apartments with it. And then last year, we replaced all the cast iron um, plumbing pipes throughout the entire building, and we replaced them with PVC pipe. Um, in the next motion, you'll see that we are planning to replace the hall carpets and repaint um, all the halls of all the floors, 2 through 10. You know, we went smoke-free. Um, a couple of years back, so it's just a way to freshen up the building and get yeah. that smoke smell completely gone for those with the health issues. When you replaced the, the pipes, you had quite a logistical operation, didn't you? That yes, you did, we did. That it you was pulled very off pretty well. Mm -hmm. Could you just explain that a little bit? Well, we we had to um, put all the tenants number one. We came before you into the hotel next door, across the street, um, home two suites, and that went very well. Um, very convenient for the tenants. Um, we had to have um, engineers involved and um, the city, um, how um, the city inspectors and everyone was involved. We had to make sure we were getting everything fire rated and put in correctly and um, tearing out walls, putting walls back. Um, the walls came out beautifully. You can't even tell they were even cut out to begin with. And that so. was in like the middle of 2020, wasn't it? Kind well, of. it actually started at the beginning of the year right before the pandemic and yeah. we had to work through the yeah. pandemic with the tenants and the tenants did a great job right thank you okay anything else on that okay i need a motion on this item i move that uh, we adopt the attached resolution uh and i'll name it here um, resolution b 2295 accepting the 2021 cfp grant for planners two Second. It's been moved and seconded. Please begin voting, Commissioner Wilson. Uh, aye. 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 Okay, five to zero. And then next item along with this is the resolution B2296, Planners 2 Capital Fund Program, five-year action plan, and 2022 Capital Fund Annual Statement Performance and Evaluation Report. That's a long one. <laughs> <laughs> Once again, Mayor, this is attached to the, the previous um, resolution. Um, we're going to, we're just detailing what we're going to do um, with those funds, what we're planning to do with those funds which is um, replace the carpet and repaint the hallways to freshen up the building. Sounds great. 
Any other questions on this item? If not, um, I'll entertain a motion. Madam Mayor, I move that we approve Resolution B-2296, Planners to Capital Fund Program and the Five-Year Action Plan and the 2022 Capital Fund Performance and Evaluation Report. I second. So we move to second and please begin voting. Commissioner Pricing. Aye. 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 Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And the next item is Resolution B-2297. Community Development Block Grant Consolidation Annual Performance and Evaluation Report. This will be Mary Dwyer, the Community Development Coordinator, handling this item. Madam Mayor and Commissioners, I'm before you to present the annual consolidated annual performance and evaluation report. It's a, the CAPER report that the HUD requires every year. Um, this reports on what we've done with their money. Um, this year was an interesting year for us with COVID, so um, some of our numbers were down a little bit, but we persevered through the pandemic, and so we repaired 15 houses in town. Um, we did four loans for first-time home buyers. Um, we also used the funds to do five residential demolitions, including one multi-unit um, apartment building. And we partially funded a repair of um, and replacement of a rather good-sized project um, for the line on Olive Street to service several houses and two apartment buildings. So um, then in addition, we uh, reallocated $10,000 for rent, mortgage, and utility assistance while we were waiting for our CARES funds um, between CARES 1 and CARES 2. And um, finally, we also funded the public service agencies in town. We funded seven of them this year um, to serve uh, low-income people, disadvantaged families, and the homeless. And um, this year, we served almost twice as many as last year um, due to the uh, issues related to COVID. So uh, that's what we've done with money. Uh, we spent uh, $419,548. And probably a couple of cents, but I rounded. <laughs> yeah. Does anybody have any questions that I could answer about that? I've just got a question in terms of community development block grant funds versus the funds we receive from the CARES Act. Right. Did, did, okay. did you have a responsibility, I mean, along with the city manager and the staff for allocating the CARES Act funds? Because they went to a lot of community service organizations. Too. Right, right. We, um, we did. Okay. Uh, the... Care, some of the CARES Act funds came specifically to CDBG. Okay. So we got two CDBG CARES fund grants, okay. one for $201,497, I think, and the other one for 101000 and some other dollars. Because um, <laughs> I can't sure. remember that one off the top of my head. One, yeah. um, those... Those two awards were specifically to be used in the same way that CWG funds were to be used. Okay. And so um, looking at what we could use them for, we used them for public service agencies. We used them for a warming center for the homeless um, during the mm -hmm. cold winter months. Uh, we used them for small business forgivable loans. Um, for those small businesses that had been severely impacted by sure. COVID, they could apply. I worked with Taylor Tetter on that particular project. Um, so those were the CDBG CV funds. Yes. And then we also got a grant, um, ESG, the Emergency Solutions Grant. Yeah. We got COVID-related monies through that project as well. Okay. That came from the federal government to the state, from the state to us. And that was directly awarded to the city of Leavenworth because we already had an ESG grant from them. Great. So those three small pools of money, I 
oversee and kind sure. of work with those agencies to make sure they're spending them appropriately. The big pools of money, the city manager takes care of. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. That was a good rundown. Ms. Boyle. Sure. Thank you. Anybody else have any other questions? Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, can you explain how does the first-time homeowner loan program works? Yes, I can. Um, the first-time home buyer program um, works um, like this. Uh, someone applies to our program. In a perfect world, they'd apply to our program before they sign a contract. That would be my favorite way that they would do it because I'd like to talk to them about how to make it the easiest process for them. They, they apply to us. When they apply, they have to be pre-qualified for a loan. They have um, to meet our income guidelines. Uh, they have to take a home buyer course um, and pass that. They just have to pass. They don't have to get an A, but yeah. they have to pass. And then, so then they turn in all those documents to us we make sure that they, they're qualified. Then I sit down and talk with them about our program. Um, at that point, kind of I start working with all of their, I'm going to call them their people, but their realtor, their banker, um, the, the title company, and I kind of work with them to make sure that they're using our money appropriately. We have some underwriting guidelines that they need to follow. Um, mostly that involves the financial um, institution when they're writing the loan. Uh, if all that works out, oh, and we have to inspect the house using the housing quality standards inspection that HUD has. Um, we inspect the house if anything needs to be repaired or modified. They have, the seller has the opportunity to do that. We'll go back and re-inspect. We pay for that inspection. And then we take a check to the closing along with a lien statement that states that the people will remain in that property for five years. Mm -hmm. At the end of five years, it self-releases. And then the house is theirs as long as they keep paying for it. And if they don't stay there five years, they have to pay it back. And how much is the first time now? First time home buyers money, how much is that? Um, if they qualify at, at a lower income, it's eight thousand up to eight thousand dollars. It's okay. based on the prop price of the property. Okay. And for <clears throat> moderate income folks, it's um, up to five thousand dollars. Okay. And again, based on the property price. And we did this year increase the price that a property could cost because, well, properties are costed more. So we used the HUD guidelines for that um, and increased it to $168,000 for can, cost of the house. And can that be used for closing costs? Um, it can be used for half of the down payment. The applicant has to put up half of the down payment. We want some skin in the game. Right, right. So half of the down payment, closing costs, it can help buy down interest rates. Okay. It can even be used toward principal if there's money still available within that amount that we award, and sometimes there is. Okay, that's great. Thank you. Yeah. And then uh, as long as we're talking about programs, if you'll give me like a 30-second spot here, um, the first time... The home repair program is a great program for um, folks. It's a health and safety repairs. So we do electrical, plumbing, uh, HVAC systems, roofing, uh, those kinds of things. And uh, our goal is just to allow people to be able to stay in a safe house um, and, uh, and to make sure that they have the basic services that they need. Um, again, they have to qualify based on income. Um, we also have a structure uh, for how much they qualify for. Um, for lower income, we've increased that to up to $10,000. And for moderate income, we've increased it up to $8,000. So, and part of that is because of the cost of having roofing and HVAC systems installed, some of them are quite expensive, so. 
that's good. That program has been around a long time, too. Years it ago. has, and I'm still amazed at the number of people that don't know about it, yes. but there it is. <laughs> yes. So I'd encourage yes. people, if they have things that they need to do, um, we get a lot of seniors in our program. We get a lot of first uh, younger homeowners. Um, it's a wide variety. So, and when I was volunteering to help people fill those out, they didn't. They were intimidated by the paperwork and stuff. But it really isn't that difficult. It isn't, um, and we've streamlined some of the paperwork. It's gotten down to I think it's three or four pages now. It, it's pretty pretty minimal. Okay. A lot of check check boxes, so right. not so bad. Okay. Thank you very much. Any other questions? Not. I would entertain a motion. Madam Mayor, I move that we approve resolution B2297, Community Development Block Grant Consolidated Annual Performance and Evaluation Report. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Please begin voting. Commissioner Wilson. Aye. 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 Thank you. Five zero. Thank you very much. And the next item on the agenda is consider purchase of new police radios. Chief. Madam Mayor and Commissioners, the Police Department is before the governing body this evening asking for your authority to purchase replacement handheld police radios from Motorola Solutions in the amount of $201,237,000. The Police Department had planned to submit a request in the 2023 capital improvement budget to replace our handheld radios that we currently use. We acquired these radios in 2014 and the standard life cycle for a handheld radio is between seven and nine years. We were well on uh, schedule to do that depending on the wear and tear, that sort of thing. In December, in late December of 2020, the police department received notification from Motorola Solutions that they would quote, no longer accept orders for replacement batteries for the uh, federal standard radios that we currently had. Uh, we could still get them, but um, they weren't going to support them in terms of replacement or repair. The designation for the, federal, for the federal standards for radios had changed and been upgraded, and they had been phasing those out, which is commonplace. Uh, that happens. The police department has mostly the APX 4000 model. Um, we have one APX 6000 model. Uh, the difference is we have one for the school resource officer. It is a much more expensive and sophisticated radio that allows them to talk to the police and to the school staff on different bands of radio. So that's a much more. Now, the, that is no longer an issue as recently the school district has upgraded and changed their radios. So that, although mentioned here, is not a, a, a matter going forward for us to be concerned about. Our plan had been then to, instead of buying Motorola uh, batteries, if there was a failure, to simply get some from the aftermarket, which there were available. Um, but apparently everybody had the very same plan, and it became very difficult for us to get batteries in, uh, in a timely fashion and in stock. We have some, and we're fine. There's no issue today, but it became an issue that we, we were concerned about. The other issue that we were made aware of by Motorola Solutions was that uh, they identified these particular batteries and aftermarket batteries were no longer, quote, intrinsically safe, which meant that there was a small hazard um, to the officer if we went into some sort of toxic or hazardous environment. We don't do that very often, but I simply wasn't going to take the chance. Given the totality of all of those things, it came down to a question of can we make it from now till 2023 under the current system? And it is my recommendation that we don't want to operate that way. There is one thing that's the most important in public safety, and it is communications. We have to be able to communicate. Um, there is no, no other alternative. And so as a result of the totality of those circumstances, I'm here tonight asking for um, this uh, particularly unique request that we need to do this now. Um, and so that's why we went through the process. Um, and those are the circumstances. Um, in terms of the budget impact, 
So the state of Kansas established a contract pricing, but the uh, Johnson County also did a separate bidding process, and Motorola Solutions used the Johnson County uh, contract process because it was slightly less expensive. Um, and that's allowed by the finance rules for us to either use state contract pricing or, or something like this. Um, as part of this, the police department will trade in 50 of our current 75 to get a credit for $15,000. We will retain 25 of those radios to help us get through the gap between now and when the new radios arrive. Um, so this project, uh, if you would approve it, would be funded out of the City of Leavenworth's Special Projects Funds, uh, which was um, provided by the, department, the Finance Department. Um, so the action that I would be asking you to take would be to approve the purchase of replacement handheld police radios in the amount of $201,237 for Motorola Solutions. There is also a separate and additional expense that would go along with that but wouldn't be part of this. For $4,500, we would have to have the radios programmed with all of our talk groups or channels um, that we currently have in the inventory. Um, and so I would ask you uh, to approve the purchase of the handheld radios and just uh, just an acknowledgement that there was a, the $4,500 can be approved at the department director level, but it is part of this. I just wanted to make sure for full transparency that you were aware of that. And I'll do my best to answer whatever questions that you might have. Okay, between the time you're, you're trading in some of these, you only have 25 left. How, what if there's delays? How long? How long? Is, yeah. That's another. Is there, is there a pro, any problem with delays, like with buying cars and other things? Yes, is the answer to that question. The Motorola solutions tell us it would be about eight to ten, maybe as long as twelve weeks before the new radios get here. I would like to re, uh, to reassure everybody that we're functioning just fine right now. The radios are working, the batteries are working, and we have a we have enough in stock. It wasn't a question of the immediate problem. It was probably the nearly year that we would have to go to make it until that budget cycle kicks in and we started making the formal process in the CIP. And that's why I feel like it was a little bit more of an urgent problem. Um, we're retaining those 25 just in case there's an issue. Um, and we'll, uh, which I th I'm satisfied will get, us, uh, will get us through if there is some significant delay. So you can't trade them in after you get the new ones? Yes, ma'am. A, a broader part of all of this is that there are other city departments like the Parks Department and Code Enforcement and all of that that have, have radios, right? Okay. And so this is essentially probably going to be a two-year plan that come May when we start to make presentations to the budget. You very likely anticipate seeing that portion of the other departments getting replaced. So this is just the police department. Okay. I have a question for Chief. Yes, sir. Special project funds, is, is that part of the capital improvements program budget or, or, the, or, the, op, or the kind of annual operating budget? Uh, it's essentially reserves. Okay. Um, so I think it's um, another key indication of why reserves are so important. Okay. This is com unfunded completely. I mean, as the chief said, you know, okay. 2023 is when we were looking at this. Um, so this is why you have these for these kind of emergency situations. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions? Okay, thank you, Chief. Yes, ma'am. Uh, if there are no other questions, I'll entertain a motion. I move that we approve the purchase of radios from Motorola Solutions Incorporated in an amount not to exceed $201,237. $201, Second. It's been moved and seconded. Please begin voting, Commissioner Wilson. Uh, aye. 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 <clears throat> Five to zero. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Sir. Thank you. Next item on the agenda, claims, consent agenda. I move to approve the claims for September 11th, 2021 through September 24th, 2021, and the amount of $486,040.71, net amount for payroll number 19 effective, September 24th, 2021, and the amount of $374,744.27. Includes police and fire pension in the amount of $9,624.04. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Please begin voting. Commissioner Pricinger. Aye. 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 Thank you, sir. All right. 
Um, no other items on the agenda? We'll go around the horn here. Mr. Framer? Yeah, I do have a couple things. Uh, first of all, I uh, wanted to make the first notification that uh, we're going to do the Trunk or Treat uh, program again. So that's October 23rd um, out at Sportsfield starting at 5 o'clock. I think we're going to have maybe a surprise from the police department out there uh, to bolster the event a little bit this year. So really looking forward to that. If you're interested in participating, uh, there's a finite number, but registration's open now on the city's website. Um, and so uh, that's, that was a popular event last year, and we're going to continue that, uh, make it a little bit bigger and better uh, even this year. I do have some a uh, couple comments on Camp Leavenworth. Uh, first of all, as a city manager, I need to thank my staff. Uh, a couple groups that I really want to point out, uh, the Parks Department. We had the entire Parks Department out there uh, cleaning, uh, cleaning before and then, of course, cleaning after. They were still out there Monday picking up trash. Um, a really dedicated group um, setting out tables and picnic tables and uh, benches and just a lot of hard work that they put in getting ready for that. The refuse crews, uh, we had refuse crews there picking up at midnight on Saturday night after the concert got done so that uh, the residents of the Stove Factory Lofts would have a clean parking lot, Esplanade would be clear for traffic, and so that we could really clean up and get that uh, area back. So uh, thank you to them and, and, of course, their supervisors. Um, and then finally, the police department. Um, you saw just about every officer we have at one point over the, over the two days. We had officers working 14-hour days on Saturday. We had officers standing uh, guard in the same area for 14 hours. Of course, you know, we had food for them. They weren't there the entire time. Uh, but they put in um, an enormous amount of work. And um, I'm happy to report that we had no incidents, no serious incidents. A couple kids that got separated from their parents for, you know, a minute or two. Uh, but uh, but so that would lead me into thanking the public for um, uh, just being down there having a good time. We had we had no disruptions. We had uh, so many good interactions with our staff, with our police department, um, with the vendors, with the greeters. A couple numbers: ten thousand one hundred and fifty people um, over the two days had seven thousand six hundred and fifty people come through uh, the gates on Saturday. Um, we got an email this morning from, and I won't use the full name, of Miss Tyler from Fayetteville, Arkansas. She said that she um, went to St. Mary many moons ago <laughs> and uh, came back to Leavenworth for um, Camp Leavenworth That's and cool. spent some time going around the city and was just really excited about the city of Leavenworth and uh, sent us a note this morning letting, letting, them know, letting us know how much she enjoyed her time. Uh, the sponsors, our local sponsors, wow, did they really jump, uh, uh, step up this year. Zach Ford did the Friday night fireworks. And I don't, I don't hesitate to name them because I'll forget them, but we had uh, Geiger and uh, Riley Holmes and St. John Hospital. We had, we had a lot. Uh, Green and Meyer Rentals really, really jumped in um, uh, and helped us out a lot. Um, and then the uh, final thing is we'll, we'll be doing an after action report um, as we always do with these things. We've gotten some feedback, uh, almost all positive, but a few things that we can improve. Uh, we're not perfect. Uh, it was a unique festival this year with Melissa Etheridge um, on Saturday night. So, uh, you know, we'll see what the footprint looks like as we go forward and any changes we can do. So. Uh, specific feedback is good. So if anybody has specific feedback, not just anecdotal, we'll, we'll put all that into the after action meeting that we have and, uh, and keep, keep marching forward. So that's all I had. Thanks. Well, this, the feedback I have is that <coughs> Melissa Etheridge enjoyed herself. Right. I did have a chance to speak yeah. to her and she, uh, obviously on the stage every, between <laughs> each song was indicating how much, uh, she was enjoying her time at Leavenworth and, and my conversations <laughs> with her uh, echoed that, that she was very happy with everything uh, during her time here. Thank you. Thank Thanks. you, um, Mr. Kramer and the staff. People don't realize how much work it takes to put on a festival and how much work that the staff of the city does between the policing and the cleaning and the taking, just taking care of all the little things that go on with this. So we appreciate everything that the staff has done for this event. Um, I'll let you guys go around, then I have a couple things. Uh, just another anecdotal uh, accolade. I ran into a Five Guys driver, a uh, gentleman, told me 74 years old, and then he said he came to Leavenworth, uh, taking somebody to Leavenworth, saw this thing happening. He and his wife came up from Liberty. They happened to be antiquers, so they spent 
the day hitting a bunch of antique shops in town, and he spent Saturday night watching uh, Melissa Etheridge. So there's somebody, and there's I'm sure many stories of those 10, or 7,500, 7,600 people that were here Saturday night, and the 10,000 people here both nights, many of them from out of town. Uh, just let everyone know, it's, we're getting into flu, se flu season. Flu shots are available at the VA. Uh, you know, I know this town uh, has lots of veterans. I got my flu shot today at the VA, and where they're having it is a drive-through clinic at the old wall. I call it the old Walmart, the one up at the plaza. You just drive in there, show them your VA card, hang your arm out the window, and they jab you. <laughs> so it's uh, very, very easily done, and uh, I mean, that's what they do. <laughs> it's not much more than that. And, uh, so it is available. I just want to let everyone know uh, for the veterans, and I suspect they, if uh, the VA has them, I imagine the drugstores and everyone else has them. They're readily available. So thank you. That's all I have. Thank you. I, you know, uh, Mr. Kramer mentioned, uh, you know, at some point in the not too distant future, there will be an after action uh, review of the this this year's Camp Leavenworth. I must say that I know an after action review was done two years ago, and I. I think I saw the results of that in terms of the layout, in terms of where the stage was, the flow of people seemed really, really good. We took uh, a lot of the activities and events that were across the railroad and brought them back into that. I think that was all good. My point is, is that uh, we are a learning, learning organization, and I appreciated that, and it was very, very evident as soon as I walked into the, um, into, into the footprint on Friday evening. Um, the only other thing I had, Mr. Kramer, was uh, 16th Street Terrace, the stormwater project. I mean, I live fairly close. To that it, it, is that finished? I don't know if all the plantings are yeah, done. Yeah, yeah, um, that's what I was, And right. you know, a lot of that stuff ends up being under warranty, um, uh, sod or, or trees. I don't have enough yeah. to give you an exact uh, rundown. Yeah, it that. seems like they're all the big work, but I think that there may still be a little bit of work to do along the lines of what you're just saying. I, I just happen to I'll live. Check. Okay, I appreciate it. That's okay. all I have. Yeah. Um, yeah, about Camp Leavenworth. Uh, I just want to thank all the volunteers that helped out. Uh, I know I was able to volunteer at the main gate with uh, County Commissioner Cause uh, for four hours on Friday and Saturday I did four hours with her as well. And uh, then I walked around quite a bit. So I was down there quite a bit most of the day Friday and Saturday. <laughs> and uh, the uh, police department did a phenomenal job uh, right there as well. And I just, uh, I like doing that, you know, I always, I feel like I don't have to do it, I get to do it, and I enjoy it, and to see the energy of the people coming in, people were thanking us as they came in, saying thank you for having this event, because they were worried we weren't going to have anything this year. It was a beautiful day, oh, there were so many children, I know, that came out Friday night, the Carousel Museum, I think, had over 400 people, 400 children. Uh, per uh, Nancy Klimp that I seen the next day, she said they it was just crazy, and those kids had a great time, and uh, I really enjoyed it. And then even with the food trucks, I went around and talked to them and the vendors, and uh, I don't know. I think a lot of the food, it, you know, it was a big hit on all of it. Uh, a lot of funnel cakes. I don't know, <laughs> I don't know how many funnel cakes. People were were leaving with funnel cakes. <laughs> You'd have to have funnel cake. No cotton candy. Right? <laughs> no, I didn't say that. I'll write and that down just, for now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then just girl. one more note. Uh, of course, Melissa Etheridge kept talking about, you know, how, you know, she had her dream come true, too. Because she always wanted to come back here and play in her hometown. So uh, she was very emotional about that. So uh, I'm glad we were able to make that happen for her and that she enjoyed herself as well. That's all I have to say. <clears throat> Sure. Yeah, I just want to say uh, our community needed this event. Uh, we were on lockdown last year. Uh, this right here brought joy, hope, uh, and it brought our community closer together. I just want to say thank you all to the citizens for no incidents. Uh, it just shows you that uh, when we do come together to fellowship and express our love and enjoy uh, these moments, uh, that we can do it without any incidents. I definitely want to say thank you to the police department, uh, you know, just their service and their commitment. And, you know, my feet was hurting for the hours <laughs> I that I was there. My feet was hurting so much, my toenails started screaming at me. <laughs> but just want to say thank you to the police department, uh, to the city staff, Paul Kramer, O'Neill Marketing Company, oh, yeah, uh, 
Melissa Etheridge, the city commission as a whole. Uh, like I said, you know, we genuinely care for this community and it shows this, how the citizens care for each other with this event. Uh, so just want to say thank you all who came out and participated. Uh, just say thank you and, you know, we're looking forward to next year. Yeah. Um, one other thing I have to add to that, and I talked to some of the local businesses and they did very well this weekend by having 10,000 people downtown. Yeah. Um, our local businesses did very well. Um, I heard a, a complaint, um, I think it was political in nature, but it's obviously not true. Um, our, our local businesses were there, were, there were applications for food vendors and applications for craft vendors on the, the sites, all the sites, and it was promoted by our city and it was promoted by um, O'Neill and um, any, any restaurant that wanted to attend could apply. Now, I know that uh, one, at least one of the restaurants I talked to said that they, could, they did not have staff to keep their restaurant open and have a food truck. So I know that uh, that probably applies to several others, but I would bet that most of the restaurants did very well this weekend. Um, we aren't trying to keep anything secret or make any special effort to go out of town to get businesses. I ran festivals. I ran these festivals years ago, and I know that we always had some specialty vendors that came out of Kansas City. We always had specialty local vendors. And if we could fill them with the local people, like our Lions Club or our local, local businesses or organizations, we did that. But if we didn't, then we had to go outside of, of town. And um, I know that we did a fair process of advertising this. So um, that is the only negative comment I heard. Everything else has just been um, so um, appreciative of this event. And I think it's, a, it's been a good event. And uh, I don't want to dwell on the negative. This, is a, this, is, this was a positive event, and it's only going to get better. Um, O'Neill does it. A fantastic job of organizing. It's much more organized, more organized than it ever was when it was run by volunteers. That's for sure. And so I think we, we chose a good company to do this. And uh, I look forward to working with them again. That's so, all I have to I say. And I think it's worth mentioning that O'Neill Marketing, they do things like the Irish Fest, Boulevardia. They did the Royals uh, World Series Parade. They did the Chiefs Super Bowl Parade. Uh, and, you know, these people are pros, and that's their business, and they do it well. It would be very hard to do a festival of the magnitude that we had this past weekend with volunteers. I mean, you need a lot of expertise. A lot of people have a, a good Rolodex. They call in people, and they know how to set things up, set it up, and tear it down quickly. And everything I heard, they did an outstanding job. Yes. And our hotels were full, too. Yeah, hotels yeah. were and all booked. People and people were happy, and even Melissa commented, you know, she goes, wow, there's actually some really nice hotels here. And yeah. <laughs> so, and I think they were pretty full up yeah. with people. So. And because of those hotels, we were able to pay for this thing. That's Because right. that's all transient guest tax. That's Whether right. it's property tax or anything else, yeah. right. it's transient guest tax. That's what it's for. Which was excellent. Well, thank you all. And uh, if there's nothing else, um, any more comments? If not, I would... Entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. So moved and seconded. Please vote aye. All in favor. Aye. All in favor. Aye. 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 aye.